neighbor? What you doing? Ah, I'm just listening to the king of pop, Justin Bieber. The man just keeps on getting better. Are you a believer? I got you. More of a Drake kind of guy. Anyway, you want to come over and play some Fortnite? No, thanks. Oh. Well, if you change your mind, just flick me a text. Or send me a message on Facebook. You'll see me online. You remember my gamer handle, right? It's Friendly Swinger 69 Hey, I'm just going to the uh, studio to shoot a YouTube video. I feel like we need a bigger TV. I mean, this one's not even OLED. How am I supposed to watch anything properly on this? Well, maybe it'd seem bigger if you watched it less. Time travel. Something the matter, dude? You just look kind of... weird. This outfit is deadly. Legit fresh. I've just been listening to the king of pop. MJ is bitching. I don't think there'll ever be a time when he's not cool and loved by everyone. Uh... Hey, you want to come over and play my brand new NES? Your what? Where have you been, airhead? Nintendo Entertainment System? Only the most popular console on Earth. I just got a brand new game, Super Mario Bros. Get this, the main character is a plumber. So are you coming over or what? No thanks. Nerd! It's totally radical. The graphics are righteous, real gnarly. When you start using the secret warp pipes, it's legit. Cowabunga. Okay, I feel like you're just using slang that no one from that era would actually use in a complete sentence. Don't freak out and have a spaz, man. What era are you even talking about? The 1980s in which we clearly all live? <laughs> your accusations are heinous. I'm gonna go. What's your damage, man? What are you, my insurance company? You're acting like a real dip today. I can barely understand you. Eat my shorts. That might be the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Oh, I'm crushed. Are you done? No. There's more. Yes. What, like, bogus? Not even close. Bud. Let's hear it. Bath. 
bag? Bite me. Ooh. Harsh. I'll see you later. Hey, if you change your mind, just give me a phone call to the phone in my house, which is the only way we can contact each other without talking in person. But if you call me too late, I might not be home because I'll be hanging out at the mall, which is where we like to go to socialize in groups. Hello everybody, my name is Guy Pigden. I am the Savage Filmmaker. I make feature films, web series and shorts, and I'm here to give tips and advice to indie filmmakers about how to make those things. How do you get the film look? How do you make something feel cinematic? These are the questions that we as indie filmmakers are constantly asking ourselves when creating our work. The answer of course isn't any one thing, but rather a combination of elements that when brought together in just the right way, create a type of cinema magic. A new plugin program for DaVinci Resolve called Dehancer sets out to recreate several of these elements for you. You apply Dehancer's custom film stock looks to your footage, or use it to create some of film's unique characteristics, without having to shoot on actual film. Or go back in time. In this episode, we're going to break down the plugin, see what it can do for your footage, how you can apply it in Resolve, and whether it's worth considering for your projects. I was provided a free version of the plugin to trial, but all of my opinions are my own. If you're wondering, I used the Dehancer plugin for all of the 1980 sequences in the opening intro, just to help give you an idea of what is possible when using it. The intro itself was filmed on the Red Gemini at 12 to 1 in 5K. We made a point of not using any type of filtration other than the ND filter, so you could see exactly what Dehancer could do to the image. For all of the present day segments, I simply applied a very basic grey, so I hope that footage and the contrast between those looks gives you an idea of how you can use Dehancer to manipulate and adjust your image to give it a much less modern feel. But that is just one way you can use Dehancer. The plugin has a huge range of adjustable elements that can change your footage in both subtle and dramatic ways to give you something you might have never thought possible with modern cine cameras. Now, for a little bit of context, we currently live in a digital age where cameras for both stills photography and video are made up of megapixels and bit rates. Our cameras are now computers with sensors that, through ones and zeros, seek to produce images that seem true to our human eye. But not so long ago, the movies we watched were shot on film. In fact, prior to 2010, the majority of films were still shot on film. And digital cameras, at least the ones readily available to indie filmmakers, were pretty average. Just the other day I got my Panasonic DVX 100B. A lot has changed in the last decade, and the process of shooting on and developing film is largely no more, with a few notable exceptions. I'm a huge proponent of digital technology. It's this technology which has allowed me to make my movies. It's this technology that provides people like me ways to narrow the gap between the $100 million feature film of Hollywood and the type of films that I can make independently. So I'm very grateful for the Pocket 6Ks and 5D Mark III's of the world for providing new tools for independent filmmakers to help tell our stories. But through this evolution to digital cinema, I also can't help but feel that something has been lost. My favorite films were not shot in 8K, they were shot on Super 35mm film. That film was exposed and developed and through a series of chemical reactions, produced a picture that was scanned, printed and projected at my local theater. As great as digital is, there are many of us who feel that something has been lost through the switch in the art form. The organic texture, the imperfect way in which real film stock is developed to become an image is very hard to mimic digitally. Computers are a precise tool. Film was not, and those variances and subtle imperfections of film are, I think, what we identify as part of the magic of cinema. Real film just hits different. If you don't believe me, have a look at a series like The Walking Dead, one of the few shows that filmed on actual film. 
until its most recent season. Now compare that footage to other contemporary shows. There's just something about this process that feels different. Another great example would be the Lord of the Rings films versus the Hobbit films. Lord of the Rings was shot on film, while the Hobbit was shot digitally. Lord of the Rings feels timeless, it's stunning, immersive, it's cinema magic, everything you want film to be. The Hobbit is missing that feeling. Regardless of the VFX and story and whatever else, the pristine digital look of The Hobbit makes it actually feel less real. It's lost that intangible quality, that gravitas is gone. And I attribute a significant part of that to the digital cameras The Hobbit was filmed on. This is often something that sits with us purely on a subconscious level. You couldn't necessarily identify the difference between digital and film. Certainly I can't. And I absolutely acknowledge there are many tests out there showing you can make digital images look so close to film it's impossible to distinguish one from the other. But I also think that largely the industry cares a lot less about replicating the film look than they did at the beginning of the shift to digital. Camera companies seem more concerned with how high they can push their resolutions and bit rates with cameras like the 8K Red Raptor and the 12K Ursa Mini Pro from Blackmagic. It seems like we're no longer looking for a film look, we're looking simply to create the best image possible, which is not necessarily the same thing. In our pursuit of the best digital image, I definitely feel like we've lost something. Images are so crisp and sharp on these cameras that they don't feel filmic anymore, they feel fake despite actually being the best they've ever been. The hyperreal nature of these images takes us further away from their intended destination of immersing us, the viewer. All a lot of simple tricks and nonsense. And clearly, I'm not the only one who feels this because while our entire industry pushes for more pixels, a lot of cinematographers and filmmakers seem to be battling the quality of our own cameras in hopes of recreating that organic film feel. This is why we use filters like the Blackmagic Promist, which is designed to soften our image. Or why we buy incredibly overpriced vintage lenses on eBay, looking for glass that is 50 years old and riddled with imperfections to reintroduce those imperfections and character back into our ultra sharp, practically perfect, hyper real 8K images. Lens manufacturers are taking this so far that they're actually creating what would once be considered technical faults and outdated coatings into their new lenses to develop these older, more unique characteristics. Through these measures, we are hoping that our images will not look so digital. The struggle for filmmakers now is to find a way to take the digital edge off our high resolution camera sensors, or to put it more simply, we are all searching for that intangible film look. Which is why a product like Dehancer is so intriguing to me as a filmmaker, because using this plugin is providing us a new tool to get back to that film look and assist us in that very thing we all seem to be striving for. Where vintage lenses and filtration degrade the image as you record, Dehancer takes your image and degrades it in Resolve to give it some of those same characteristics. And perhaps degrade is not the right word, hence the name Dehance is very appropriate. This plugin takes your crisp digital image through various options and allows you to massage it back to something much closer to film. This is a film emulation plugin. It is mimicking the look and characteristics of film stock and it's doing a pretty damn good job. Dehancer is very easy to use. You can apply it as a single node on the color tab of DaVinci Resolve and you can use it to create your look entirely or you can create your own color grade and use Dehancer at the end of your node tree to finalize your look. The most basic way you can create a look in Dehancer is using the film stock profiles. These are essentially like applying a LUT to your footage, but each profile is based on actual real world film stock and has been meticulously designed to take on the color characteristics of that stock just as if you were shooting on film with it. T is for tungsten and D is for daylight film stock. After making your choice of stock, you can further tweak settings to dial in the look you want by pushing and pulling the exposure, adjusting black point or white point, upping the contrast, 
color density or saturation, or using color head to adjust the blue, green, or red levels in your image. All of these adjustments are designed to react how film stock would, and it gives you a huge amount of control over the image. And once you're finished with your film stock, you can really start to have some fun. First, we have film grain. Now, film grain is not really the same as digital noise, which is what is produced by digital cameras in darker or underexposed areas of the image. While we often want to reduce or remove digital noise, a frequent process toward the end of a color grade is to add film grain. Again, this is in an effort to move away from the overly clean digital look your camera might produce and get the image to feel more like film. In my latest short film, we applied film grain as one of our final steps in the process. DaVinci Resolve has its own film grain effect and it works well, but Dehancer film grain is much better. Resolve's film grain is essentially being pasted over your image. This means it's not truly immersed in your image. It looks fine, but it doesn't really behave like real film grain would. Dehance's film grain, on the other hand, actually breaks down and rebuilds your image with film grain ingrained. This makes the final project look much closer to what film grain would if you'd actually shot it on film. This particular effect might be the best of Dehance's plugins to really give you the shot on film feeling. As film grain is so integral in what we subconsciously perceive film to be, and something that digital video just does not have. The way Dehancer has designed this effect is just phenomenal, and something I could see myself using on almost any big project I'm working on. The next effect is halation, which by definition is the spreading of light beyond its proper boundaries. What that means in a film context is the sort of red fringing you get around certain high contrast areas of an image. It is actually an unintentional flaw that happens in the process of film and can be more or less noticeable depending on the colors and brightness of your image. Next is the bloom effect, which softens your highlights and gives everything a pleasing glow. This does essentially exactly what your black promise filter does on the end of a lens. You can increase or decrease the effect to your tastes, but it's going to be most noticeable around practical lights, as you can see here. Why you might choose to use this instead of a ProMist is that you can control how strong the effect is here. While once you've put your ProMist on your lens, you're committed to that level of intensity until you take it off. If you find the ProMist characteristics are too dramatic, there's nothing you can do in post to dial it back. With Dehance's Bloom, you can control this on a shot-by-shot -shot basis, increasing or decreasing the effect to your taste, which gives you a much greater degree of control over your image. Each of these effects individually may not be very noticeable, but if you combine film grain, bloom, and halation, you can start to dramatically change your image and really dirty it up, so to speak. Then there's film breath and gate weave. These both further add to a more vintage feel. Film breath creates random changes in exposure and color, much like playing old film reels which are no longer pristine. While gate weave is hard to explain but has your image move around as if it's running unevenly through a projector. To show you how you might use this, take a look at this clip from my feature film Older. This was shot in 2K on the Ursa Mini Pro. We added a black and white LUT to it and we filmed using vintage lenses and lit it in such a way to create a sense that the scene in question is from the 1940s. But despite our best efforts, the image itself is still suffering from that digital, overly clean feeling. Look what happens when we apply film breath and gate weave along with some grain. Suddenly, we've got something that feels much more of that time. There are multiple applications for these types of effects, and the sky is the limit with how you want to use Dehancer. For most people, it's gonna be very subtle effects that simply shift your footage away from the incredibly polished, clean, crisp, high resolution look that new cameras are producing, and starts to suggest some of the more timeless traits that we associate with real film. For other people, you may want to push these effects into a stylized, dirty, grungy, faux film reel that looks like it's been hiding in someone's basement for the last 30 years. So, is it worth it? I personally think that this is exactly what a lot of filmmakers have been searching for in terms of creating looks that feel more like the films we remember from our childhoods, unless you're currently 10 years old. In which case, get off YouTube and go do your homework, you snot-nosed little brat. I mean, go watch Casablanca or something. If you know much about my channel, you can probably see my influences and where I take 
some of my inspiration from. And this is a plugin that I could see myself using to one degree or another in pretty much every project I make going forward. It's just that useful. But I'm definitely someone with a great appreciation and fascination with the past. I was going as far as looking at 16mm cameras on eBay and researching the viability of purchasing one to shoot on. Dehancer has probably saved me a lot of time, energy and money. It provides the perfect middle ground where I can take my images and manipulate them in ways I had not thought possible without owning a 16mm Bolex and some film stock. And Dehancer is not just for dealing in extremes. The subtle applications of its effects is something that provides a lot of value as well. This is a very cool plugin. The only negatives are its overall cost and the toll applying these effects will take on your computer. Priced at $399 US dollars, this plugin for Resolve is $100 more expensive than Resolve itself. And while an incredible amount of research and work has clearly gone into Dehancer's effects, I don't think it quite justifies this price tag. And at this price it definitely rules out a lot of aspiring indie filmmakers who just don't have that type of cash to throw around. Resolve does colour grading, editing, effects work and audio, while Dehancer really only affects the image and is still more expensive. Fortunately, there is also a light version of Dehancer you can purchase for a more reasonable $199, which still has most of Dehancer's best features. But I do hope they reconsider their pricing strategy to make this more accessible in the future. The other thing that is important to note is just how intensive Dehancer can be on your computer. Adding film grain and resolve is already no small task, and Dehancer's film grain is even more graphics intensive. You can slow even a good computer to a crawl while rendering or on playback after making only a small number of changes. This is definitely going to slow down your post-production workflow. If you do not have a decent computer to apply these effects, then you will not be able to use Dehancer. Your computer will just choke. And this plugin is definitely something you want to apply at the very end of your grade and only turn on for the final export. All in all, this goes in my highly recommend category as I think it is a very well designed piece of software and one I'm looking forward to utilizing going forward as I search for that elusive film look. I'm excited about the possibilities it provides for digital shooters and as a tool is much more flexible than committing to vintage lenses and filters. Why compromise your image while filming where well, you can use Dehancer in post and really adjust to what extent you want to embrace imperfection. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing and if you want to support my channel, my latest feature film is available to watch on Tubi TV and Amazon Prime for free. Links in the description. As always, I am The Savage Filmmaker and I'll see you when I see you. Dear Dehancer, we accept the fact we had to sacrifice a whole day to make a short film to use with your software. But we think you're crazy to make us create an entire video explaining how it can be used. The truth is, filmmakers will find different ways to apply it according to their own style. Whether they're an exercise freak, a gamer with no friends who may or may not be wearing a wig, a random extra used to establish continuity between two scenes, or a guy who accidentally time traveled to the 1980s. Does that answer your question? Sincerely yours, The Savage Club. Don't